Now, it's already been a long and hard journey for the old soldier, but believe it or not, today he'd be getting a break. Or so he thought. Whilst passing through the wasteland, Red suggested that Cage make a two-day pit stop at a place known as the Botha Ranch, a place of which he was well acquainted with the owners. This wasn't exactly a flop house, of course. Cage would have to earn his keep like any of the other workers on the land. But at least this way, he'd be safe at night. He sat with the heads of the family in the homestead kitchen. There was Ray, the father, Matilda, the daughter, and Boris and Malcolm, the two sons. And with that being said, I would like to extend a warm welcome to our newest friend here on the ranch, who has promised to guard and oversee our homestead with pride and certainty. No different as if he were one of our own. But if... And not to worry, dear Boris. If it's credibility that you're looking for, I'll have you know that Cage here is a friend and close associate of Red's. Red? My, we haven't spoken with her in a while. Indeed we haven't. But this just goes to show you how close she keeps her word. She speaks with action. Thus is why we have a dear Cage here. And who says I have to agree with what Red has to say? All because she sends one of her own here doesn't mean I have to like it. Malcolm! It's fine, father. It's fine. (sighs) You'll have to excuse us, sir. The forecast between our bloodline hasn't much seen the sun these days. It's fine. In fact, you don't have to worry about me. The moment I begin my rounds, it'll be like I'm not even there. With all due respect, sir... We don't particularly want you here. We distribute enough payroll to our men as it is. It'll only be for two nights. Yeah, but you gotta understand. This here ranch has been a family business for generations. We pride ourselves on self-sufficiency and privatization. The last time we had someone straying here was before our father's time. And I can see you're very private. The array of electric fences and turrets proved that enough to me. I'm not keen on staying here either. No offense. However, this is an order, and I intend to follow it. Again, you'll have to excuse my brothers. It isn't- It isn't about you. It's about who sent you. Red and her people have always been the shady type. And we're not dumb to the fact that she's probably having you boys skim our info from us. I thought you said the last outsider here hadn't been seen in generations. Yeah, who roamed in here, naturally. Ever since Daddy started getting paranoid, he made some kind of link with Red and her people. We don't even know what it's about. Now, son! And can you blame him? With the way you two have been bickering about who owns the ranch after Father goes has been utterly disgraceful! Who else but a couple of selfish 'er ne'er-do-wells does such a thing like that? We only want to cut ties with Red, and undo all the garbage connections you've been letting Dad make under your influence. Anyway, that's none of my concern. If any of you can just point me to my nearest post, if I have to clock in anywhere. Oh, yes, of course. How improper of me to allow all this unnecessary prattle in front of you. You are our guest, after all. <clears throat> Please go see Randall. He's our head coordinator. You can find him over by the stables this time of day. Just tell him I sent you, and he should get you all set up. Should be an easy little stay before you're back on your way. Thank you. Like I said, like I'm not even there. Regardless, welcome to Bartha Ranch, Mr. Cage. Do, do you go by any other name, or...? Cage does just fine. Of course. Welcome, Cage. I told you this would be easy. Jeez, but not without all the drama. Matilda seemed nice, but acted like she was a second away from an emotional breakdown. The brothers are obviously assholes, and the father... He just seemed completely out of it. Yes, you'd be correct on each of those points, actually. Fill me in. Matilda may be a complete emotional wreck on the inside, but she sacrifices those feelings for the betterment of the ranch. 
Boris and Malcolm used to have a great relationship with her, until she influenced their father to partner with me years ago. They're free to have those opinions, of course, but the brothers aren't without flaws themselves. Both of them have a very conservative, almost authoritarian view of how to run things. In fact, their greed would most definitely run that place into the ground. And the father? Ray is a simple man who prefers neutrality in all time traditions. He's been the moral fiber of this land for many reasons. Though now that his health is declining, everyone on the ranch has been on edge about the future. This would make for a quality soap opera. Do I gotta get myself involved, or can I just watch things from the sidelines for once? <laughs> Heavens, no. This is my property as much as it is theirs. Simply enjoy your little time off before you cross state lines again. They want you properly restocked and rested before you close in on the bounty. See? I'm not that cold. <laughs> Indeed you're not. Mind if I join you? Malcolm, right? That's right. I'm surprised you need so many guards here. This place is overcrowded with turrets. <laughs> You'd be surprised at how many critters chew through the wire sometimes. Speaking of which... Wow. Those are Mark III's. Very powerful. Very expensive. Yeah, well, you can never be too careful. The family and I used to have problems with organized raider groups before, so it was necessary. You'd be surprised at how put together some of these bloodthirsty skirmishers can get. Oh, believe me. I know. I'm sorry, Cage. For what? You know, snapping you like that earlier. However you feel about it, try to understand that the Bartha family used to be a whole lot different before your friend came along. Mm, she's not my friend. Just an employer. Last time I'd do a job for her, too. Oh, yeah? Well, good. What she got you chasing after? Uh... It's okay. You don't have to say. I've met enough of these grizzled bastards to narrow it down. Chances are, she's got you robbing a company, dropping off a suspicious package, or hunting a bad guy or something. Bingo. Ah, that's so. Must be an important mark to have you going out this far. Yeah. It's proving a lot more unnecessary as the days go by. Tell me about it. We used to have this guy here who spent a whole month traveling the country just to get burned by the guys he was sent to meet. It was a big money delivery job that he barely pulled off with his life. The contacts went rogue last moment. They just blasted him and left with the goods. Tough break. I can imagine those people thought they were home free until their dogs came nipping for their heels. Who the hell does she work for anyway? Don't know. I've wondered about that for years now. I put all the possible groups together, but none of them seem to have the firepower she possesses. In all honesty, I think her employers are a good cover-up. Shadow beings that don't even exist just to scare us. Really? If you ask me, this Red comes from old money and runs her operation out of a big chair somewhere we'll never get to see. It's not like things were getting better between us in the first place. But this acquisition only divided my family even quicker. Has it always been this... divisive? In the usual ways, you'd picture an old pre-war drama taking place on a ranch. None of us were ready when Father showed signs of deterioration. Our simple troubles of the day quickly transferred to whom we carry on the leadership. And before you say anything, yes, I tried to bring up running things democratically between the three of us. But Boris was too power-hungry and Matilda was too manipulative. I don't know how she learned it. But when Red brought up helping us out, she gave us a vote. A vote that will be broken by Matilda, because she saw the opportunity in it. No one said this would be easy, but Matilda made it impossible that day. No offense, but besides the scruples, you all seem to have it quite secure here. Something that most people wish they could have out here. Nah, it hasn't been right ever since. 
Hardly a week later, everything changed. Suddenly we all had new supplies, new guards, and security to board this place up. The biggest red flag? That raider group from up the mountain suddenly stopped bothering us. Matilda then told us she'd been working out further details with Red. Long story short, she gave her power. Power strong enough to rule the raiders with an iron fist. The Bartha Ranch is now the most feared stronghold in the region, Cage. About a year ago, we were just some backwater patch in the middle of nowhere. She runs raiders. Mm-hmm. Don't let that prissy girl act fool you. My sister's shiny red apple with black insides. <sighs> I know she's not a bad person, but the temptation of anything to control is too strong for her. She never got much attention in the house when we were young, nor get the first say in anything. Dad was never mean to her, just didn't connect. <clears throat> sorry, sorry, I didn't mean to bore you with family history. And you? How are you planning to handle things? Well... I'm not going to wait around and let the girl keep tearing down all we've built even further. Maybe if Boris and I can get things in his favor, maybe then I can convince him to keep a level head about his plans. Will I ever get all three of us to come to an agreement about this? Maybe not. But you bet your ass I can sleep a lot sounder once I get Red out of the picture. Okay, Cage. I should get going. Try not to get heatstroke out here, huh? Will do. Best of luck to you, Malcolm. Stragglers. I'd hurry if I were you. The local authorities probably heard the firefight. Then why did it even come to that? I thought you were supposed to be the best. We tried, ma'am, but the ranch was a lot more fortified than we were told. Even the snipers couldn't help us that much. Please, don't... Shut up! Hey! Now, I did not command you to hit them. Just... Just let me try and find a way to resolve the rest of this with a little more honor. We don't have time for that. Listen, listen. How many are there left? Look, we can either handle them right now or drag them to your doorstep in front of your brothers so then you can figure this out. Your choice, but make it quick. All right. Tie them up. Blindfold them if you need to, and... Yes? Are, are you sure? Well, Matilda just... Yes. Yes, I understand. Yes. It will be done, sir. What? No! What are you all doing? I said- Sorry, ma'am. New set of orders. We have to erase everything. What? This is not what I wanted! No! Don't you dare hurt them! My father! Please! I order you to not hurt them! We're sorry, ma'am. It had to be done. Clean this place out, boys. We need to get out of here. <laughs> Come in. Boris! How unexpected. Is something wrong? Everything. Everything's wrong. Workers are getting skittish. Haven't had rain in a moment. And word from a courier tells me he's seeing a bunch of raiders camped out by old man Martin's ranch up north. Would you know anything about that? Really? You'd come here only to tell me that? That isn't the only thing I said, now did I? Do you know anything about it? <sighs> no, brother. I don't know a thing of it. Nor do I have any intention of ordering a full-blown massacre of one of our oldest family friends and their livelihoods. Tell me, would either of us benefit from such a tragedy? You know damn well the ranch has lost customers for years from them, despite our friendship. And that warrants killing to you? No, not me. You, however, have been making plenty of changes around here for a bit under our noses. Oh? 
And should I simply ignore your actions of periodically spreading lies and dissent among some of our lifelong partners and other family friends about me? Aye. And let us not forget the whispers I've collected these past months between you and the Night Watchman. What was that about the threat being inside the house? Watch it. Have no clue what you're treading on. I think I do. Especially when it involves me in the center of it. Face it, brother. You've never been a good liar. In fact, you're the worst liar I've ever met. Sometimes I wish you'd just come out and say it. Just cut the old-fashioned family deception and tell me how bad you'd like me out of the picture. You're on thin ice, sister. You think you're so much better for this family than me? I honestly don't see why you admit on top of this that you'd use common raiders to your advantage too. And don't you dare lie to me that you wouldn't. I wouldn't be surprised if you infected this bloodline even worse by allying yourself with that damnable Caesar. something? No, no, not at all. Not at all, dear Cage. How, um, how can we help you? What are you doing here? I was told to collect today's pay here. Oh, yes, of course. I have it in my desk over here. One moment. All there. I'm sure it was a well-earned day's pay. I'll be here if there's anything missing. Of course. Are you all right, Matilda? You look a little... red. Oh, nothing at all serious. Just discussing with my brother here the importance of working in the face of change is all. Yes, change that wouldn't need facing if certain people didn't align themselves with it. That's enough. Thank you. That will be all, Cage. Boris. Okay. Return to our story after this. The hosts at Robots Radio get a lot of questions from people who are interested in starting their own podcasts about how they can start, how they can grow their audiences, how they can create good content, even what microphone to use and what software to use, things like that. Well, We're changing things up at Robots Roundtable to talk and share about the things that we've learned, the things that work, and the things that don't. We're sharing with you our actual real-world experience. How can you launch a show like the Fallout Lorecast and get as many listeners as we did early on and rock it to the top of the charts on Apple Podcasts? How do you create a show in such a crowded marketplace as it is today, as opposed to 10 years ago? We're getting together every week to share our answers with you. Just look up The Podcast Professor, a robots roundtable with the hosts from Robots Radio. From directors and producers Joel Jackal and Michael D. Batu comes Patreon Peril! When the evil Zetans attack Earth, it is up to the heroic patrons to save the world. Frederick Winther, with the power to swing stuff. Hodgepodge, the cardboard wolf, able to package and ship items of all sizes at record speeds. The Donnie Difference, 
who never received a speeding ticket. Richard Villa, who says he saw Bigfoot once. Shannon Dale White, that nifty race car driver who famously won first place while filling out his taxes going over 200 miles per hour. Jackson Little, with the ability to get struck by lightning every time he walks outside. Kyler Skulkin, who only vows to fight those with bad credit scores. Alex Roberts, you should know that name by now. He's got a record for absorbing the most radiation and not dying. Whatever powers he gets from that mess ought to help somehow. Jorge Vega, known to be the best pilot in America only when he's drunk. Brandon Cullison, with the power of accidentally smacking his ankle with the side of his scooter and merely laughing it off. Now that's a menace you don't want to anger. Lost Paws Jr., orphaned at birth and raised by subway rats. He can steal whole pizzas and set you up for your next rabies shot on all fours. Don McCormick, who can leave out this absolute unit? When you make her angry, she'll cut the wires off of everyone's headphones in a five-mile radius. And lastly, Mike Tyson. We couldn't get the boxer, but he's the next best thing. Don't let that thick beard fool you. He keeps an active Japanese hornet's nest inside. All in all, it looks like Earth is pretty doomed, but the Patreons make something out of all their strange talents every time. Do you have what it takes to take on the Zetans? Join us. We need all the help we can get. Over at patreon.com slash abomradio. Now, back to the show. Hello, this is Dennis James. Here is Leo A. Hoig, Director of the Office of Civil and Defense Mobilization, who has a message for you about the importance of a home shelter for protection against radioactive fallout. After nuclear attack, radioactive fallout could be a threat to every living thing. Tests have shown that the best protection against fallout is an underground shelter covered by at least three feet of earth. A basement shelter also affords good protection by closing off windows, exterior entrances, and banking exposed walls. In homes without basements, first floor areas with the least exterior exposure, such as a bathroom, utility room, or hallway, should be selected. My own shelter costs $212. It's cheap insurance for the protection of my greatest treasure, my family. And now, back to our story. Okay, Father, wait here. I have to get something real quick. Um, okay. Hi, Mr. Bartha. Hmm? Oh, oh, yes, yes, hello. Just head to my room. Don't mind me. Uh, actually, uh, may, may I trouble you for a moment, sir? Huh? Sorry, Mr. Bartha. W what was that? Cage. They've been trying to kill each other over me. There's no love, no sanctity between them anymore. I've been putting on this act since the moment I knew my days were numbered. My own children have turned into monsters before my very eyes. No matter how good my wife and I raised them, we knew this day would come. Find who's right in all this, even if they aren't fully correct. Find the one who can carry on this legacy so that my soul can finally lay at rest. I... I... Can you do that? Yeah, I, I'll try. That's all I need. All right, Father. It's about time for dinner. Um, oh, yes, yes. W where is... Uh... I'll show you the way, Dad. Just what are you doing up here? This isn't the workers' quarters. My room's up here. On who's ordering? Uh, please. Come, son. I, I want to go down and have something. I'm... 
I feel a little faint. Of course, Father. <sighs> Cage, I'm sorry. You startled me. Apologies. Yes, well, it's so strange to receive such reality checks like this. The idea of someone stepping foot in this house is so alien when I really think about it. I understand. Besides our yearly feasts around the holidays and such, it's always been quite lonely up here. It surely isn't much of a castle. But I can't help but feel isolated from the workers we know so well. I know the feeling, ma'am. Well, I'll turn in for the night, unless you have anything else for me. Actually, I do. Oh, yeah? How can I help you? I... know I let the unappealing underbelly of my family affairs make themselves known to you this morning. And I apologize for that. However, now that you know them, there's something I have to admit to you. Go ahead. Your secret's safe with me. I won't beat around the bush, Cage. I'm scared. Very scared. This here ranch has been around for centuries. This is the first time we've ever seen people so divided like this. What was once a full, humble pie has been reduced to slices. Some folks like me, some folks like the brothers, but one thing they can all stand behind is my father. Now that he can't put his foot down about anything around here, it's like we're sitting on a ticking time bomb on this land. I wish I could help Matilda, but I was hired in the interest of keeping this place clear of any outdoor threats. Trying to solve a generational issue never really comes in the form of an outsider. I'm sorry. Oh, I'm no fool. I know it's going to be up to me to sew this thing all back together. But the signs have all been there since day one. They're going to try my life cage. They're going to either cause an accident, slip me a mickey, or smother me in my sleep. I need protection, my friend. What are you asking? I want you to protect me, Cage. Here, come to my room. Come on. Uh, I... W what I know this is unorthodox, but I have it on good authority that Malcolm and Boris might try something soon. I have to be ready. I have to be protected. Stay with me, Cage. Just these two nights. I... you... you want me to guard the door? <laughs> no, not the door, silly. The room. With me. I... Uh... Do you ever take your helmet off? Uh... I mean, I know it's practically your uniform, but I'd rather you be comfortable while you're here. Here, let me help you. I... wait. <gasps> Cage. My dearest Cage. Take no offense to what I'm about to say, but you are a beautiful man. <sighs> Thanks. No, I mean it. I really do. Such a befitting face behind the mask. It's so artful. And even that tattoo on your cheek. I'm sure whatever accolade it presents was well deserved. DC, many years ago. I saved my group of squires from a super mutant in some old building when we were cornered. So, I got the big hero treatment, and I knew a guy who was good at them. <laughs> I was just a stupid kid. It was nothing. It was stupid. No, Cage, no. You were the furthest thing from stupid. You were brave to save them like you did. <laughs> Looks like I'm standing in front of greatness at birth, right in front of me. 
Hmm. Why do you stay so strictly business, dear? Red may be your employer, but she's no puppet master. Hang a little looser, my love. Hmm. I'm my own puppet master, miss. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. That's because you haven't had someone to share yourself with. What's the matter? Work and personal obligations keeping you down? Funneling out your soul for the betterment of something or someone else? No one to trust besides you and that copy of yourself in your brain you've known since a child? Have you ever... Have you ever convinced yourself that you've moved past a problem, only to figure out that you've eaten those words? I know exactly how you feel. Kate, please. Explain something to me. What? What? Why should I let you live? Knowing what I know about how you... Coordinating hundreds of raiders to do what they do across this damn world. Answer me! I... We had to do what we had to do to survive. To survive. I'm sorry. I'm, so, I'm sorry. I'll, I'll do better. I'll do better. I, I promise. I promise. Don't you ever manipulate me like that again. You hear me? <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> saying this is just the new way to pay? That's right, Dad. It's pesky, but it's necessary. All we need is your John Hancock on this little stack of paper, and I'll handle the rest. Well, well all right. If, if you say so. Um, now, what's this say here? You ready? Just sign here. Oh, all right. Right there, Pa. Just one more. All right, and just this last one here. Uh, hmm. I hereby acknowledge this deed over to, uh, M Malcolm. This doesn't sound like payment paperwork. Yes, Father, it is. I, the words look a little bit different here and here. And have a looky here. Father, you're not thinking straight here. Look, this is done the exact same way as before. Just put your signature right there, and I'll leave you to your coffee. Are you alright? You're being a little paranoid, Dad. Now, son, I'm I'm not being paranoid. I just, uh, just a little tired is all. I, I need to look over this here document for a moment, okay? I need to get this out the door now, Dad. I'm not very sure about this one, son. You, you need to look at it. Ah! Uh. <clears throat> Sign. The papers, father. No! No! Jeez, Malcolm. Lay off. Cage, what the hell are you doing? Shouldn't you be at work? Yeah, sure was. But I happened to walk in on you about to break your father's arm. What's going on, man? I thought you were trying to be the mediator here. I am. I... I'm trying to help get this thing turned over to... Who? Boris and you? <clears throat> yes but only to get it out of the hands of Matilda. If she gets him to do it in her name, 
we can already consider ourselves fucked. And this is when you then try to pull the wool over Boris's eyes and somehow get him to listen to you? Then somehow get him and Matilda to sit down and talk about this like it's a war room? <laughs> Pardon, but it's the best idea we've got. And let's not pretend that dear old sister has a halo over her head or something. Surprise it may be to you, Cage, but I just got word that the Martin family ranch was just completely wiped out this afternoon. On Matilda's orders. Do you want to know how close we were? Their elders used to change our diapers when we were children. All that family bonding. And for what? You're asking for the impossible here, Malcolm. If you're really about what you say, you get the ranch under your name. Then let those creeps twist in the wind. I can't get around to what Matilda wants in this, but... Boris is definitely about himself in this case. Malcolm? Malcolm, don't you think that's the best choice? Hello? Please, enjoy your stay here, Cage. Just do yourself a favor and relieve yourself about the future of the ranch. But I... I apologize for bringing it up. I'm sure you have your own matters to fret yourself with. Just... Please don't mention this to Boris. He'd have my head if I let him know about our conversation. What? Please, Cage. <sighs> Just stop asking questions, okay? Uh, yeah. I'm sure. Uh, is everything okay? I'm not sure, Mr. Bartha. But it seems someone failed to get me on their side. There's been a change of plans. What? With what? Whatever you do, don't leave the ranch. I don't know where it came from, but Matilda's losing her mind. She's paid off all the mercenaries connected to the ranch and told them to take a hike. You mean the raiders? Good. I'm glad she's come to her senses. It's not just the raiders. I just got off a call with her, and she's planning on disbanding everything. You hear me? Not only that. Before I could even get a word in, she threatened to sell all the data she gathered from me. But God knows it'll be in the hands of the gunrunners or the Van Graaffs soon. You need to deal with her, now. And what? Leave this place in the hands of Boris? And that asshole Malcolm? Fat chance. Sounds like her father can rest easy, knowing this place won't be passed on to a warlord. Cage, I understand that I initially told you not to worry about being involved in any of this drama. But this is a very unexpected turn of events I can't allow to unfold any further. If that woman leaks a pint of my info to the wrong people, you can already consider this odyssey to be over. This journey would have been for nothing, and you won't get paid. I can't trust any of my other agents on that property. You need to handle this now. So, you want me to kill her? Just... kill her? Yes, handle it and get out of there. Do not bother calling back until the deed is done. Red out. everything I could to stop this travesty. I get it now. I understand now. Everything is going to be okay from now on, I swear. Oh, hold on, Matilda. The, those monsters. 
The raiders. I axed them. Each and every one of them. Every last one. Those bastards can rot in the lowest pit of hell for all I care. I don't even know how to explain it, Cage. It was a religious experience at night. Something that called me back to the innocent girl that I once was. My damp ranch has brought me nothing but moral corruption. Nothing but an annex of my personal character. Who knew that I would so mindlessly allow animals such as these raiders to provide us with provisions for so long? As dirty as I feel, I also feel so... cleansed. And it's all because of you, dear Cage. You refused to feed the generational greed that was my family. And now that I have seen the error of my ways, I want to start over everything with you. Matilda. The nightmare of so many I've yet to meet falls on my shoulders and on my shoulders alone. That is something I must present before God, I know. But while I'm here, give me a chance to experience life with someone who knows how life is to be treasured. How life is to be viewed. Please, I... I beg of you. Do you mean it? I... I do. I do, my love. I really do. Do what you will with me. Reject me, even. Just tell me you understand. I understand. Oh, Cage. <laughs> Matilda! Give it up, Cage! Matilda! Matilda! <coughs> Are you okay? I'm fine, Matilda. I'm, I'm fine. Please. Please tell me you're alright. You were right. You were right, Cage. You were right about everything. Matilda. Matilda! Matilda. Oh my god. I'm so sorry. What happened? What was that noise? No! My, my children! Oh God, no! <laughs> no! Oh God, no! <laughs> Tell me that's you. I'm safe, Red. I'm already gone. Thank goodness. I thought those damnable brothers got to you first. You're a bastard, Red. You know that? You were born a bastard. Not many things weighed too heavily on his back these days, but what happened today was too much for Cage. Cold-hearted betrayal and snatching away anything salvageable struck an all-too-familiar nerve with the old soldier. Red may have been a shifty young woman thus far, but never has she gone this low. Well, our boy is lost in the thick of it now, and much too far to turn back. Cage lost a lot of respect that day, but he'll be back to normal tomorrow. In fact, he'll need to screw his head on extra tight for his next and final stop. 
it won't be long until he meets his target. Stay tuned next time for the thrilling season finale of the Cage Chronicles. 18 carat run of bad luck. The moment of truth arrives. Cage is closing in on the prey that Red sent him all this way to hunt. This final stretch won't be easy though, and should the old soldier expect a high stakes fight from his mark, stay subscribed to this podcast for more. Today's episode was written and produced by Preston Hodden, edited and mixed by Ethan Walsh. In our cast, Cage was played by Mike Tyson, read by Marianne Stanek, Matilda by Crystal Romero, Boris and Ray by Josh Smith, Malcolm by Austin Rogers, and The Raider by Kari Schultz. Now, don't dust your boots just yet, partner. We need you to get the word out there. Giving us a five-star review wherever you're listening to this podcast could do us a world of hell. Or share it with another Fallout fan. You know they'll like it. You can follow us on Twitter or Facebook simply by searching for A-Bomb Radio. And you can also get the exclusive True Vault Escapades merch by supporting our Patreon. Also at A-Bomb Radio. Feeling chatty? Come join us in our Discord. We even have a merch store to browse from. All these things can be found in the link in this podcast description. We'd also like to thank the Robots Radio Podcast Network and all their other amazing shows. I'm Forrest Lee, and I'll see you at the next one. You've been listening to a Robots Radio Podcast. Smart shows for interesting people. Check out all the shows at robotsradio.net. Are you an avid player of the Elder Scrolls Online and looking to take your game to that next level? Well, the Red Diamond Courier Podcast is here to help. I'm Bob Chichinsky. And I'm Dogbark24. We are two experienced players aiming to help others learn and improve through in-game knowledge and references. From PvE. To PvP. And everything in between. There's sure to be something for you in the Red Diamond Courier. We, we hope, hope you check, check us, us out. out. Thanks. My name is Brian Burton. It's been 26 years since the bombs fell. And since I've left the vault, I've been trying to rebuild. But this isn't the Appalachia that I remember. There's so much more to everything going on. And I promise to find the answer. So if you're out there, if you're listening, just hone in on these coordinates. Remember, there's a place for you at the end. Omega. The Omega Broadcast Fallout Story is available on iTunes, Spotify, and many great podcasting sources.